Today's episode is brought to you by Function of Beauty. Function of Beauty is the world leader in customizable beauty, offering precise formulas for your hair's specific needs. Here's how to get started. First, you take a quick but thorough quiz to tell them a little bit about your hair type and your hair goals, such as lengthening, volumizing, or oil control. And because your hair changes with the season, you can change your hair goals before every shipment. The thing I love the most about Function of Beauty is it comes to your door. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go pick it up. You don't Mm -hmm. have to put shoes on and go to the store and go shopping. No, you you place your order on your phone, on your laptop, and it comes to your door. All you have to do is take a couple steps to the front door. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. So guys, literally, what is the point? We never have to buy off the shelf again just to be disappointed over and over. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to take your quiz and save 20% off your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to let them know that we sent you and to get 20% off your order. functionofbeauty.com slash advice. All right, Ash. Yes, I have two Guinness World Record um, things. (laughs) Things. (laughs) Okay. Um, And you're going to try to guess. Okay. How tall do you think the tallest man ever recorded was? Tallest man ever? You have five seconds. Five. Oh. Four. Eight foot. Wow. Close. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Eight foot, 11 inches. (gasps) Did you look at my screen? No, I didn't look. I would never. Um, Who was the oldest person who ever lived? How old did she live till? Five. Oh. Four. 108. Three. Two. No, one twenty-two. <gasps> I'm tired just thinking. What about was it. her diet like? Honestly, she drink a lot of, I bet she drank kale. a lot of water. Kale. I bet she was an herbal tea drinker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die at forty because the diet I bet coke. She hiked. <laughs> diet coke is coming for you, Taryn. In a thousand percent. Is. Oh no! Not funny. Oh, it's not funny. <laughs> I've been Hello, telling her. Everyone. I've been telling her. Hello, everyone. Actually, actually, let's, okay, let's channel, like, um, you know, the, like, really professional podcasts that yeah. are, like, I'm so and so and I'm so and so okay. and this is, okay, okay, let's okay, okay, okay. okay. You go first. No, you have to go first. Oh, okay. I have to go for your lead. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> no, I got it. I got it. I got it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Unsolicited Advice. Oh, it's at the end. We say, oh, and this is what? Unsolicited Advice. No. Yeah. What are you talking about? Okay, it's my dream. What? <laughs> then you start. Okay. <laughs> I thought I did good. Uh, Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. This is Taryn Renee. And I'm Ashley Nicole. And this is Unsolicited, unsolicited Advice. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the CSI. <laughs> 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 Just pretending like I, I don't know the sound. Everyone's probably like, "Are they on what drugs?" In the hell, no. Let me tell. Yeah. Wait, first, first of all, first of all, hi, welcome back. Yeah, for real. I'm Ashley. That's I'm Taryn. Sorry. Um, I really did, guys. I've been telling everyone I slept so good last <laughs> night, and I have come to the realization that this is thirty. Like I am officially. Yeah. I'm not thirty. I am in my thirties. You in it? I have brand new arch supports in my shoes <laughs> that are making me walk like a dream. I'm on a cloud. I'm on a cloud. <laughs> My posture is great and I'm on a cloud. And then last night I was having trouble falling asleep. I knew I had to wake up early and I was like, oh, what do I do? I did a like bedtime meditation, Mm. 10 minutes. All I did was like close my eyes and did deep breathing and like focused on my body parts, like from my toes working up to my head Yeah, and literally slept like a baby. And here I am today, just in the best mood. Yes. Guess what I'm doing tonight? A deep sleep meditation for 10 minutes right before bed. What could she be doing? (laughs) No, I, it really is like, we've talked about this before, but a podcast or like YouTube or whatever, like if you're personally not in a good place, it is so reflective. So I feel like when we, first of all, when we're high on coffee, you can tell we start talking super fast. I'm actually sipping my coffee. We always, I mean, I don't think we record without some kind of caffeinated beverage in our hands. Um, But yeah, when your moods are thriving, you're thriving. Mm. So this is going to be a good episode. (laughs) I'm really excited for my story. Okay. Um, Also, I have a tearing it up. You have a tearing it up. I just wanted to step up so you're not carrying the weight on I'm your proud of you. shoulders. This is your segment. <laughs> it is my legacy <laughs> really that I'm is. leaving. This is your name. For the world. Yes. yes. 
Okay, so this is called just tearing it up. Um, hi, my name is Alea. You probably, oh, she said you probably won't say it right, but it's pronounced uh, Alea, but I guessed that. So Hello, Alea. Brownie points for me. I'm in grade 12 and I'm known for not caring what people think, but it's hard to not care when the most embarrassing thing in the world happens in front of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in grade 11 in my English class with a lot of the popular kids, I still remember there were certain classes that I was like, the pressure's on because the cool kids, yeah, like some of them are just stacked yeah. with like all the cool kids in one, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was one of them, but <laughs> anyways. Okay. <laughs> Um, so she continues, we were doing a group reading, so it was very quiet. I had a cold that day and kept sneezing. And you know how it's like embarrassing to sneeze or cough because it's <sighs> disrupting the class. Yeah, it is. Why is that embarrassing? That's I've such a had, normal thing. Guys, I've had the worst allergies li- my entire life, Same. my entire Same. life. And especially growing up because I grew up with dogs and I happen to live in literally one of the cities where one of the main weeds I was allergic to of thrived. Of course. So I was just a mess all the time and I just yes. sneezed constantly and it was mortifying for whatever reason. Everything's yeah. mortifying at that age, but that's true. That's true. Simply sneezing 20 times in class. Well, anything lot. when it's quiet, like yeah. your stomach growls, anything. Okay. So, so I was trying to sneeze really quietly. I ended up holding my nose when a big sneeze came along because of how quiet the class was. Oof. Bad idea. All caps. Oh, oh. It decided to come out the other end. No. How? Because it was so powerful. Oh, the force. <laughs> I freaking let one rip so loud. The kids on the other side of the class heard me. One of my best (laughs) friends was sitting beside me and she whispered in my ear, did you seriously just fart? (laughs) I was so embarrassed. I was like, no, I sneezed. What are you talking about? (laughs) That would be me. Complete and total like denial. That is not you. Denial. This next part is you. When I read it, I was like, this is what Ashley would do. Did I say it was my first period class? So yeah, I ended up calling my mom to pick me up. (laughs) (laughs) Ashley would be like, I can't go to school I would 100% be like, (laughs) I sneeze guys and storm out the room and cry. And cry and be (laughs) sick for two days. (laughs) Too mortified to show my face in school. Even if you don't share this, I hope someone read it and laughed. I genuinely feel so close to you guys. And I've been here since the start. I truly love... Um, both of you so much listening to your podcast is one of the ways I cope with my anxiety. And I'm so grateful for that. Have a fantastic day. Love Alaya. That's so funny. So good. That would have killed me. So I good. actually would have gotten no, up and walked you out would of class. Honestly like die. I, oh like man. die. I can't, yeah. I can't do that. It's so good. Anyways. Um, would you like to start us oh, off? I would love to an honor. An honor. I feel like we kind of do like whoever reads the tearing it up, the next person goes. Yeah, you know? I think we try to like give you guys a break on our voices. So it's not yeah. like if I have a tearing it up and I go first, that's a lot of me, you know? I've been trying not to talk as much. I don't know if you've noticed. Oh, I appreciate that. Like I try to like really make sure like you said <laughs> all of the things before. Taryn and I have had talks about like, am I putting in enough input? Is Taryn putting in enough input? Well, from, as two, is one of us talking too much? And we care about that. We're just letting you know. I feel like, honestly, our podcast flows so well that, like, I don't think people notice too much. This is just I us, mean, like, picking apart our From own. when you shared that sometimes I say everything and then you have nothing to say. Yeah, do you so think I'm, about that still? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just say, like, one point at a time and then let you go because I don't want to steal your thunder. Oh, that's so sweet, I know. Taryn. I'm a gem. <sighs> wow. And humble. Get yourself a Taryn. Okay. <laughs> and humble. Get out. So honestly, it's been weird, but one of my like goals right now has been hair health. Oh, that's not weird at all. I've always had very fine hair and I also am like, I can't remember the last time I got a haircut, but I feel like it's just been the same length forever. It's probably because you haven't gotten a haircut in a while. <laughs> Ashley, don't judge me. This is a judgment free zone. <laughs> get off my ad. Um, <laughs> anyways, 
I love the fact that like even down to like your shampoo and conditioner, mm-hmm. you should be intentional. Not every shampoo should be used for every type of hair. Nope. And that's why I think function of beauty is such a titan in the industry because it's like they've taken a problem and they've made such a cool and aesthetic. I'm just going to add my mm-hmm. personal little opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, problem. Solve. Solve to the problem. <laughs> Pro- answer to the problem. <laughs> Guys, Function of Beauty offers completely personalized formulas for body and skin care as well. So you can customize your beauty routine from head to toe. If you don't know how it works, let me tell you. All you have to do is take a quick but thorough quiz, tell them about your hair, what your hair goals are. And because your hair changes with the seasons, you can change your hair goals before every single shipment. Then all you have to do is pick the color, which is a fun part. Mine has a melon scent and I picked the color green. I don't know what color you chose. I have like a cool like orangey, like corally color and it was like a citrusy flavor. Love that. Mm -hmm. Then Function of Beauty's team determines the perfect blend of ingredients and bottles your formula and delivers it right to you. And something that's very important to me is that Function of Beauty uses vegan and cruelty-free products and they never use sulfates or parabens, which are in a lot. Honestly, everything. Of shampoos and conditioners. And you know what they do? Destroy your hair. Destroy. Destroy. So never buy off the shelf just to be disappointed ever again. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to take your quiz and save 20% off your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to let them know that we sent you and to get 20% off your order. Again, functionofbeauty.com slash advice. You know what? The gig is up. The gig is up. The weight loss industry has been lying to us, Ashley. I knew it. From birth, I've always been told that like your weight equals like if you're healthy or not. Like uh-huh. you stare at the number, that number has so much power oh over you and it's just not true. And mm-hmm. I feel like we're finally learning about it. And that's why I'm so pumped to be working today with Fit Tracks Dara Smart Scale because we are all about being healthy for you, for you individually, and they help you accomplish that. Guys, FitTrack's Dara Smart Scale is one of the most accurate home smart scales in the world. It measures seven... 7- Teen, guys, 17 different body compositions, which gives you more accurate picture of your health and your body. The way it works is you step on the scale and the four metal pads will analyze 17 different health measurements, including your body fat percentage, muscle mass, hydration levels, bone density, and more. That's amazing. You want to dive into your body? How health? do they do that? Let's though. find out what your bone density is. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the best part about Fit Track is that you can easily track and trend your health over time and see how your daily choices, ranging from exercise to diet, affect your health in the bigger picture. I think for me specifically, I've struggled with like, oh, this is just one bite. It's yeah. not going to affect me. But like, I would actually be able to see a physical number to tell me what that bite did, Mm -hmm. how it helped me or how it brought me back down. (laughs) Yeah. And I need tangible stuff like that. So I feel like that would be so helpful. And one of the main reasons I love the Dara Smart Scale is that it syncs with the free FitTrack app. All of my health insights are saved in one place. I highly recommend this to track your body changes. We love a good app. We love a good app. We love a good app. It's super easy to use too. Stop measuring weight and start measuring health with FitTrack. Go to fittrack.com slash advice to take 50% off your order. Plus, for a limited time, you'll also save an additional 30% with code BUILD30 at checkout. That's fittrack, F-I-T-T-R-A-C-K dot com slash advice to save 50% plus an additional 30% off your order with code build 30 at checkout. Don't miss out on this amazing limited time offer fittrack.com slash advice with code build 30 at checkout. Okay. This one is titled, should I be treating myself better? Yes. <laughs> The answer, probably. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always yes. Um, okay, let's dive into it. Hi, ladies. My Hello. name is Jamie, and you can use my name. I am the same Enneagram as Taryn, and my wing is a three. So you oh, are Taryn. No, we are literally the same. You are the same person. Mm-hmm. She is Enneagram number two with a wing three. And um, yeah, she's writing. 
I instantly um, am putting myself in your story, so I will give my like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First Taren, person Taren will advice. be great at yeah. advising you since she she knows at her core who you I are. Am you? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, she writes. I wrote into you both over the summer, and the situation I wrote about is no longer relevant. Long story short, my boyfriend of a year and a half had broken up with me due to his mental health. He left the relationship somewhat open so that when his mental health was better again, we would be able to get back together. But he also told me not to wait for him. If I find someone, I should go for it. I took his word and slowly began to get over him since after all, that is what he told me to do. I did this by getting closer to a guy I had class with that semester. We would FaceTime every week and text every day for a solid two months. I eventually ended up flying across the across the country to visit him for my birthday week. And it led to a friends with benefits type of situation. Mm, Sticky. Mm. My ex-boyfriend did eventually ask for me back a few months ago. And I did try to get those feelings for him back because I knew a friends with benefits situation wasn't exactly what I wanted. The thing is this guy from class last semester, we'll nickname him Jay is sarcastic, makes me laugh more, and makes me a generally happier person when I'm around him. For those reasons, I figured it would be better to choose the FWB. Friends Friends with with Benefits. benefits. Got it. It You know, it took me a second when I was first reading this. I'm not going to lie. I was like, FWB, what does that stand for? so many times (laughs) people will text me and I'll Google, what does FWB? (laughs) And then I respond so confidently. Like, yeah. (laughs) Well, now I'm over here just like spitting it out like not a problem. Um anyways she was saying (laughs) you guys keep us young (laughs) (laughs) she said I figured it would be better to choose an FWB situation with him instead of trying to revive feelings for my ex that inevitably wouldn't come back here's where it gets tricky Jay the FWB guy okay knows that he has a hold on me He can clearly tell whenever we hang out that I like him and I want to sit next to him when we hang out in our group setting. He also knows that I'm very particular with, quote, who I do things with. I won't participate in those things with someone unless I'm dating them or they have clearly taken an effort to get to know me beforehand, which in this case, Jay did, but also is somewhat taking advantage of the fact that I am in a place in my life where it's not too easy for me to get into a relationship. I'm a senior in college and I'm planning on moving to either Utah for environmental studies or California for film after college. I vote California. Yeah, come to come here. I don't think anyone at this point would drop everything and move to Utah with me. So I've grown comfortable with the idea of hooking up with Jay for the rest of the semester, aka until the end of college. The other week, he mentioned to me the idea of him bringing another girl to one of our hangouts. Just to clarify, this is the only friend group I hang out with every single weekend. We only all hang out with each other so that we're COVID safe. I told him, yes, of course, you can bring another girl over. We're not official, so you can do whatever you want. Just warn me ahead of time so I won't come because I already know that it would hurt me if I saw that. Okay. Which is very like aware of her to know yeah. like where her feelings are. She continues, our friends who we all hang out with know that I'm attached to Jay, but he is very emotionally closed off. The more time we both spend together, the more I grow to like him and get attached to him. Since he has trouble connecting with his emotions, it's easy for him to ignore those feelings. My friends can tell that I'm starting to get hurt, but in a way I've come to accept that I enjoy the time that Jay and I have together. So we've been trying to keep things going, but make them very low key. So my question is should I be treating myself better? I do have another love interest in Colorado, which is pretty close to Utah, and he is the sweetest boy ever. We both love film, and we text often about FCP. I couldn't figure that one out. I'm I'm gonna Final guess it's a pro. film f- film thing. Oh, you she good. said film. Yeah. That's the only reason I guess. That's Watch funny. it means something like <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go with final cut pro. <laughs> um, uh, she continues. I can tell we both make each other really happy. I've tried to slowly throw some compliments at him or send him a good morning text and see how he reacts. And he seems to enjoy it. Should I leave Jay for now? Even if nothing happens with the Colorado boy, should I make it so I get over Jay and that I'm okay with him doing things with other girls in front of me when we hang out? I feel like he probably doesn't care about me so much if he's perfectly fine showing off another girl around me when we've done stuff together. 
A little list of reasons why I've continued to hang out with Jay, even though I know I'm digging myself into a deeper hole and an even more messier situation. He has really good moves when flirting. He's really good in other areas, winky face. He knows exactly how to get me um, with my love language, which is words of affirmation. And he's memorized all the small things that I like, like where I like to be kissed and stuff like that. I think the reason I'm so mesmerized by this is because my ex was the first guy I'd ever gone out with and neither of us had had any experience before each other. This is like the whole new world with someone else who actually knows what they're doing. And I'm impressed. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I respect both of you guys so much and I'm absolutely in love with Mama Bear Taran. I will listen to any advice you give since I know you guys know better than me <laughs> to think about this logically more than um, me just wanting to be in the moment. All the best, Jamie. Dang. Jamie, 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 Jamie. Jamie. First of all, what's it like to have options? I mean, I, a, a roster in a world pandemic. A roster. I My whole am team jealous. got COVID <laughs> and has to quarantine from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> Actually, they died because they don't exist. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Um, okay, I mean, I, there's so many things I want to talk about. Yeah. All of the guys. Um, I, I'm i gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and like jump to one of the things I want to mention. I feel like you feel like you have to be with someone. Yes, Ash. Dang, hidden from, you know. We're just going to, I'm just going to dive right into it. Do it, do it. All of the options that you're giving yourself involve one of these boys. There wasn't a single option where it's just you doing your own Mm -hmm. thing. And I think that that is a very unhealthy place to put yourself in because there is nothing wrong with you doing your own thing. I am totally here for the boy drama. I'm totally here for the roster. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But one of your options should be super single and super happy. Yes. And I think there's nothing um preach ash i'm proud of you you. that was great thank you love that pull that off the top of my head i loved it i loved it um yeah i just i think um i think it's a very popular thing to think that you're only going to be happy or successful or satisfied or fulfilled if you also have a relationship going on in your life, whether it's a little F boy situation or it's an actual like deep committed relationship. Um, but you can be just as fulfilled and satisfied Mm -hmm. by yourself. Um, and I just, I'm not saying that's what you should do. I just think it should be an option. It should be just as big of an option, just as equal of a possibility as, um, a relationship with Colorado boy, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I fully agree. And here's, here's the thing. And this is what I always tell my friends when my friends come to me about a situation they're in that they're like, "Mm, this is probably not the best idea, which Mm -hmm. it sounds like, you know, this thing with Jay is probably not the best idea. Um, every time people come to me, I'm like, okay, what is the, like, what is your motivation for doing this Mm -hmm. then? Because I think we know when we're getting more out of it, than we should be. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with if you're wanting attention and things like that, especially if the other person is doing the same thing, which yeah. I think it he doesn't like seem. A, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, if you're flirting with someone to get attention, but you're not whatever, then I think that's fine, but your emotions are clearly involved. And if if you are me, (laughs) we have a very hard time separating. Mm -hmm. Like when we care about people, Mm -hmm. even if it seems like it's a nonchalant surface level thing, it goes way deeper with, with us as twos than like anyone will ever understand. Yeah. Um, you know, I can start talking to someone and by the second day, like if they just stop texting me, I'm genuinely hurt because I thought we were connected. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I I can attest to that. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think that that I don't think this J guy is a good idea because you guys have already crossed a physical boundary, which brings a whole load of other things that come. Biologically. Biologically. Like it's not even, maybe you didn't want to, maybe he doesn't want to, but like yeah. some, there's, a, there's something there now. Yeah. And I know like I've mentioned this before that I'm still a virgin and I'm waiting till marriage for sex. And I feel like people always are like, what? Like what? Talk about that more. And I, I do, I would love to give, um, 
kind of like my reasoning for it and like talk, maybe have an episode mm-hmm. where we talk about that stuff. If you guys want that, let us know. Yeah. But one of the main, one of the reasons, like I studied human sexuality in school and I highly recommend to people looking up what happens biologically when you are intimate with another person. Like it just shows that it should be something that's taken seriously because you like your body's like physically have things that happen Mm -hmm. that connect you to that person. So it makes sense why even when you're like, oh, this is like not even a big deal, but all of a sudden you're like, why am I hurt that he's bringing another girl? Like, why am I getting upset if he's like, if we're just going around, why am I pissed that this girl's here? Yeah. So I do think because the physical thing has been crossed over, like it is a more dangerous situation. Um, that coupled with you being a two, I just don't see that ending well for you. Um, so I think that like, like Ash said, I think all of these options are good for distracting, but if you're wanting to set up, like you're literally about to go through a massive transition in your life. Mm -hmm. And for me, if I was talking to you or if like this was Ash going through it, I would be like, babe. This is a time that you need to be fully just enjoying your life that you have now, spending time with your family, spending time with your friends, um, experiencing all these things, building up your foundation of who you are. Mm -hmm. Because when you go through a transition, like moving to a whole other place, it's not always easy. Yeah. So if you go into a new place where you're already going to feel lonely, you're already going to feel like, what am I doing here at times? And you have heartbreak on top of that. It's just a lot of lonely feelings that are to come. Uh So if I were you personally, I would start in a healthy way, wrapping up all these things. And that doesn't mean you can't still go hang out with your friends and see him and whatever and flirting and whatever. But I think you as a whole should be starting to repair and close and find your independence now Mm. because when you go that's all you're gonna have is your independence and this guy that's from where you're gonna be like keep talking to him like get to know each other keep a friendship but like ash said like it's like you're trying to decide who am i gonna be with or like who am i gonna spend all my time with and i think it should be more of a simple like yeah i'm gonna keep talking to him he seems cool and then when i get there maybe like we'll continue something. Yeah. But then if you're banking on all these things and then you end up in California, then like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I agree with Taryn. I think, um, I think what's going to have to happen is you, I think you need to sit down and decide like what you're looking for and figure that out first. Are you looking yeah. for a casual fling or are you looking for a relationship? Um, decide that first. It sounds based off of what you wrote that you shouldn't be with Jay. Because you're saying that you like him, you know, he knows, your friends know. I think it's very clear that he doesn't feel the same way. And I yeah. think I would, I would back out. Yeah. I would just be like, cool, like I'm- you do your thing. No, no hard feelings. You guys had like an understanding and that's fine. Yeah. I would just personally be like, I'm clearly too invested, which you already said you are. And I would pull, I would pull, I would pull away, protect myself and um, start, start focusing on the future. Like the possible move yeah. sounds incredible. And, um, even Colorado boy, that's adorable. Like I love that. And it sounds like he could, he could be like, like an actual like possibility for like a good, either good friendship or like amazing relationship. Um, but don't worry about like trying to further it and like flirt or morning time, like just be genuine with where you are. And I think to Jay, it was like, I get it. Wasting time, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the second he started being like, Oh, I'm going to bring another girl that for me, like he's gone. (laughs) Gotta go. And like I said, us twos, we love to think that we can do casual (laughs) flings. Yeah. I'm like, I'm the queen of being like, Oh yeah. Like fling here, fling here, whatever. But at the end of the day, I know like I can't like we care about people too deeply. And she knows like she, she, actually yeah. wrote that. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, pastors from Transformation Church, Mike Todd, gave this whole relationship series that, I mean, Taryn oh, and so I good. dove into. Yeah. Um, we'll link it in our stories for you guys if you are interested in watching it. Um, but he wrote and spoke about how 
as a single person, you have to live your life in your own lane and do your own thing and focus on you and what's good for you and your goals and your interests. And then one day you're going to look to the, look to the left and there's someone in the same lane focusing on their goals, doing their interests and, and trying to pursue their dreams. Yeah. And you guys will be in line with each other, whether that's California or it's Utah yeah. or, or whatever. I think the main goal here if you're looking for like a more long lasting relationship, which it sounds like we, you, we are, which mm-hmm. you can decide still. Um, but if that's the case, I think focus on you, focus on your dreams. And then yeah, one day he'll just be there. Yeah. No, I, like Ash said, I loved about the series that it focused so much on the gifts of being single and the things you learn in that, that mm-hmm. are so crucial for a relationship. Yeah. So even being a healthy in, individual, yeah. Even in singleness, focusing on yourself and focusing on being single is actually going to be beneficial for who's to come. Like you're actually laying the foundation for your future relationship. It gives like motivation of like, yeah, I want to be with someone and that's the end goal, but I know that like this time is valuable. Yes. So that, that's what I feel like we wrapped up our advice and we were very, uh, what's it called? (laughs) Straightforward. Blunt. Blunt. Sure. Because you asked for it. She said, she give said, it to us. She said, <laughs> I will listen to any advice you yeah. give. But I'm so pumped for you, Jamie, because I really do think this big transition, I'm always jealous of people who like move somewhere and get new jobs Oof, and all that stuff. Yes. Like there's so much potential, which is why like, I just really, I, whatever it looks like this time should be focused on building you into like mm-hmm. the best version of yourself. So yeah. that way you can go into this new place and like freaking paint the town red. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh my gosh. When me and my sister moved out, we moved to orange County together for the first time for college. That was the most amazing time of my life the most transformational time of my life I feel like I was I became a different person and it was I still look back with like the most amazing memories there in my first apartment when I couldn't afford groceries and I was like trying (laughs) to figure it out you're about to head into like the best time of your life and I don't want any of these guys like tainting it for you because it's such a great time to be alive yeah heck yeah well thank you Jamie so much for writing in I loved the story. If you have any updates later, if you decide anything, please let us know because y'all already know, Taryn and I get super invested in your life. (laughs) Super invested. Sometimes we have to like pull back. Pull back. (laughs) Pull back. We can't fix everything. I mean, guys, I feel like this has just become a staple. Mm -hmm. We, again, are so honestly honored Hon- to yes. partner with better help i i feel like you know when you've arrived when brands reach out to you that are literally you're like the heart of your podcast yes and we've been working with them for so long so long like, this because is a long it's such a good fit committed relationship we are committed. that we have let's make it official <laughs> unsolicited advice Rings. brought to you by better help <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you guys know we are such fans of counseling and the fact that we should not be ashamed to go to counseling and counseling should be easy to find. Yes. Guys, BetterHelp has licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, anger, stress, family conflicts, anxiety, LGBT matters, relationships, grief, sleeping, self-esteem, trauma, and literally so much more. The best part about BetterHelp is you can reach them in any way that you feel most comfortable. If you want to talk to them on the phone, you can do that. If you want to FaceTime, you can do that. If you feel like texting them, guess what? You You can can do do that. that also. One thing that I think people don't realize is that the service is available for clients worldwide. I think a lot of people forget about that. So it doesn't matter where you are, where you're listening from right now, BetterHelp is available. Their services are available to you. And then mine and Taryn's favorite thing is if for some reason you feel uncomfortable or just aren't clicking with the counselor that you have, you can change your counselors for no no rate, no change in rate whatsoever at any time for free. And um, Taryn and I have talked about this multiple times how finding the right therapist is is kind of a kind of a flow you kind yeah. of have to like try one try another until you find the right thing and i think better help has done this um done this right we definitely want you guys to be living just a happier life today and as one of our listeners you'll get 10 percent off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash advice join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health again that's betterhelp help.com slash advice 
So, fun fact about me and Ash, mm. I feel like one of our many things that we've bonded on uh-huh. is our love for jewelry. Oh, all the jewelry. Like, literally. Jack it up. Jewelry is our go-to. We buy each other jewelry constantly. Jewels on jewels. Jewels yes. on jewels on jewels. <laughs> and um, not going to lie, my heart fluttered a little bit when I saw we were getting this sponsorship with Ana Luisa. Because uh-huh. I was like, jewelry? Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Guys, if you didn't know, Ana Luisa offsets 100% of their carbon emissions, starting with the sourcing of their raw materials all the way to the disposal of their pieces. We love to see it. Incredible. We love that. Ana Luisa has limited batches, ensuring the highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste. Ana Luisa's long-lasting pieces are crafted with care from the best noble metals, They also offer a 365-day warranty to replace or refund any piece that doesn't meet your expectations. Me and Ash actually received some jewelry, and I think both of our faves is we got this really cute gold stacked chain, Mm -hmm. and that's like both of our vibes right now is like chains. We obsessed with chains. I always have at least three necklaces on. Yes. It's perfect. Yep. And I feel like you can tell just by the feel of jewelry, like when it feels like solid. You know what I mean? You mean when it doesn't leave a nasty green stain around we your neck? We love to see it. So mm-hmm. that's our, I feel like if I were to recommend a piece, their stack chain necklace is like. Stacked chain. They also point. had these gold, I got these gold hoops with this little pearl dangling at the end. So pretty. Precious. So pretty. Precious. Hair in a bun with those on. Oh my gosh. Solid. So cute. So basically here is the point where we send you guys where you need to go to get on this. And that is analuisa.com slash advice. Go treat yourself and your loved ones with a unique gift and use our code advice to get 10% off. I absolutely recommend them. They are such a great brand making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. So go check them out at analuisa.com slash advice. Well, like always, Ash, we have this like connection Uh because guess what mine's about? F-boys? No, it's about (laughs) this person. Well, it's basically the opposite of yours, but like in a great, like this is going to be great. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just going to go. Yeah. How do I find love after finding self-love? It's literally opposite. I know. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know. (laughs) I know. Plot thickens. I know. Okay. Hi, Taryn and Ashley. Hey. Ashley and Taryn. <laughs> That's Mark. fair. She said, hi to you, Mark. Hi, Mark. She said, hey, Mark. And unsolicited Mark. advice listeners had to include everyone, of course. Oh, wow. Love that. A gem. My name is Samantha. I live in Texas and I'm about to turn 26 years old in a couple weeks. I've been a qualified mental health professional for about three years now after studying psychology. And might I just say, you two give excellent mental health advice. (laughs) I literally read that and was like, I'm sorry. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Now I'm so confident to keep just... Shove it we're going to have to change our like trailer where we're like, we're unprofessional and now it's, now it's no, we're we'll be like mental health experts everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we got one. <laughs> Dead. Okay. Um, I do it on the daily. So kudos for that. On to my very solicited search for advice. <laughs> How does one find love after finding self-love? Like many women, I too am single and have heard this over and over. Love yourself first and love will find you. Mm. I have personally worked on myself for several years now and feel like I'm at a point where I genuinely love myself. I focused on my bachelor's degree while working, so no college life. I focused on my career for three years and still learning every day. I focused on loving my body the way that it is, and I recently moved out of my parents' house for the first time, which feels great. Look at you. I, now, let's just take check, a second check, 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 to check, acknowledge check. that because get it. Love it. Proud of you. I feel like personally I'm doing great. Here's the thing. I'm an introvert and never made any attempts at finding love because I just focus on those other things and depend on the love will find me when I least expect it. So no dating apps. Like I said, I had no college life and the field's of caseworkers is primarily female. So no male coworkers that I'm interested in. I'm at a time where I feel like I shouldn't be picky, but need to be picky. You know what I mean? 
Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know we all have a checklist for what we want in a partner and I'm left wondering, do I have to loosen up my standards? I live in a region in Texas where most men don't have college degrees, have children, are divorced, separated, and the good men don't use dating apps, maybe because they're taken. <laughs> Literally, it feels like the window to have met someone appropriate for me has already passed because the older I get, so do they. Yeah. (laughs) I am very much a believer in that God will introduce the right person at the right time, but it's just so frustrating to think, well, how much longer do I have to work on myself? How much longer do I have to wait? So my lovely, educated, and independent women... Like, honestly, Samantha, um, how do you do it? Do you feel like you're ever going to find love? Do you feel like self-love makes it harder to find love because you know your worth? Like, how can a guy love me more than I love myself? (laughs) And if they can't, is that enough? P.S. Clearly, I'm an Enneagram six and a Pisces. What a lovely combination. (laughs) Your friend, Sam. 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 Can I, I just say you picked the best two dude, women on the planet seriously. to vent to just now. Seriously. And because girl thing. I freaking think this is a perfect coupling of stories. Yes. Because like I think Jamie's gonna hear this one and be like, cool. And then Sam's gonna hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. To see like the importance of self-love and also it, you're not missing much because the guy <laughs> cool is not that great. Jay. Yeah, because Jay. Um, okay. I think, like Ash said, we are very two very qualified wow, wow, people. Wow. Um, I just want to go get coffee with her. I feel like seriously. we're all, we're like in the same seriously same place. Seriously, I my self love is so strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine goes up and down. I ha- I think I genuinely love myself, but I also can be like my worst critic at For times sure. too. I I think that self love is such a it's such a hard thing, right? Because I think sometimes we can give it too much focus in a way of every we we lose the ability to just sit back and genuinely live our lives because we're constantly thinking about like what should I do for myself am I like it becomes almost this obsessive way of thinking and I do think that it can kind of morph like motivations for things so I I don't, it sounds like you have a very healthy way of thinking. And I think that we should always be like, no, we know our worth and anyone who loves us is freaking lucky. Like that should always be. But I do think if we, it sounds like you, self-love is something that is very much involved in the way that you think. And I think that you should too take time where you like sit back and make sure that you are living your life and not just purely thinking every single step you take. If it is a way that you're like, you know what? Am I making sense? Yeah. No, I know what you're saying. I think, I think what's happened is I think society has, has really, and I love this, has really taken self-love, like the commercialized version of it and really pushed it to where now it's like a trendy thing to like love yourself and like focus on yourself and, and screw him or screw her. Like I'm going to focus on my dreams. I'm going to go focus on my career. And I think that's incredible. But at the same time, this is something, and I am preaching to myself here because I had to do the same thing a few years ago. Um, is it is self-love to like put yourself out there too and allow yourself to meet people. And I think that can be really scary. Yeah. Um, especially when, when you know, you're looking for something more serious because dating's fun period. But when you're in a place where you're like kind of ready to settle down and like kind of actually looking for like the one and you know, like that becomes a much more serious thing. Yeah. Um, so I think it can be scary, but it is just as important to give yourself the opera to put yourself out there and give yourself the opportunity to meet people um, as it is to do to focus on yourself yeah. and love yourself. Because um, if you don't put yourself out there, like no one's going to find you. Yeah. You know, I know. OK. OK. I know what point I was trying to make. Okay. I have an I, I have, uh, what's called. <laughs> Example. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure where we were I'm going. I'm not too confident about where this is going <laughs> just because I can't talk right now. Okay. 
Self-love has become something that is easy to morph. And it is easy to morph in not necessarily a healthy way. Mm. So for instance, I might be feeling low and I'm like, I want to go eat McDonald's, right? Mm. And I tell myself, well, I love myself and I love my body and I love my curves. So I'm doing this because it makes me happy and that's self-love because I've morphed it into Whatever makes what works for you. Yes. Whatever makes me feel good in the moment is self-love because it's making me happy. When in reality, for me, I know that if I'm getting into an unhealthy place, the best way that I can love myself is by making choices to make me happy feel healthy and to make me feel good. And sometimes I have to sacrifice certain things because it's best for me. Not because I'm trying to look skinny, not because I don't love my body, but because I know like at the end of the day, like if I go to the doctor and they're telling me my levels are off and I need to start eating healthier, I can't be like, well, I want this donut because that I love myself and that's what I want. Because if I really am loving myself and caring for myself, I'm going to do things that are healthy for myself. Just like in our earlier story, like it might sound like, well, I'm doing this because I like the attention. It makes me happy. But at the end of the day, is me doing this a good thing? Mm -hmm. Maybe not because it is hurting me. So self-love might look like me being sad and me making a choice that I don't want to make because I know that's what I need. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think sometimes we have to sit back and not just do like the in the spur of the moment, whatever I want to do, because that's just a recipe for living a reckless life and actually sit back and assess like what we really need Mm -hmm. and then go off of that. Yeah. It's not that you don't deserve it. It's what's best for you. What's best for you. And And in the end, you kind of have to, to plan like for the long haul also. And if we're talking about dating, yeah, that means along with the list of other things that you're doing in your self-love routine, whether it's skincare, working out, eating healthy, devotion time, walks by yourself, maybe yoga, whatever it is that you're doing for you, there should be somewhere on the list where you go on a date regularly. And I don't mean like it has to be at once a week kind of thing, but like, and it doesn't have to be a date because I know like right now things are weird, but like put yourself in a position, in a position, whether you're going and sitting at a coffee shop by yourself or you're hopping on a dating app, or you're going to go hang out with that group of friends that you, you know, there's a guy that you're possibly interested in. Like, I think you need to start doing those things now so that you're in the flow for it later, if that makes sense. Yeah, I will say I was very similar to you as the whole, like, I'm not going to do a dating app because I'm, I too believe in God. Like I'm a Christian and I always have thought that too. Like I, it's just going to happen at this perfect time. And I think that still is truth, but I do think like, have you ever heard that one story where it's like this guy prays to Jesus or, or prays like every day to win the lottery, like every single day. And then he never wins it and he dies and he goes to heaven and he asks like, I pray to you every day to win the lottery and you never answer my prayer. And then Jesus answers, well, why didn't you buy a ticket? Yeah. Yeah, And it's that whole thing of like, we have to take, we put so much faith in these things of like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And it will. And I believe that, but I think too, like we can't just sit back in that, but we have to also make steps. So like Mm -hmm. Ash said, like reaching out to friends and being like, Hey, if you know anyone you think I'd be good with, like, let me know or put yourself out there in this time. Like I did go on dating apps and yeah, I did not find true love, but it was good for me to just interact with people again and to talk to people. And I think that right now we're in a time where like, that's the only way a lot of people can connect right now. I was just going to say, I, f- I feel like dating apps get a bad rep. I was one I of mean, them I get who it. hated it. I would, I would much rather meet a person <laughs> in real life. And like, I, you know, I say real life, yeah. I'd much rather meet a person <laughs> in my day-to-day life and ha- spark up a relationship with them. Um, but never have we ever been in a better time to meet on a dating app because 
everyone's on a dating app. Yeah. So I, I feel like you feel like you're like letting yourself down or dropping the bar down to a lower level when you hop on a dating app, but it's like, no, it oh, really isn't. Your and standards are so needed in dating apps. So yeah. like you can still if hold anything, those up. They're high. Yeah. yeah. And also like, I know you, I know you mentioned like all guys have like these things that you're not looking for. And do I need to change that? I think they're honestly, the older I've gotten and the more I've seen my friends go through things. Like I used to be like, oh, I couldn't marry someone who's been married because that would be so weird because I'm just experiencing it. But now I've seen some of it, my friends be, get in just horrible relationships and now are single. And I'm like, they're no less of a person than they were before. And if not, like they're even more ready to like love and be in a genuine, amazing relationship. Yeah. So I don't think you need to like lower standards, but I think some of those things are very like very broad reasons to look at where I think you need to focus more on the individual person. Like you might meet someone who has just had a lot of hard cards handed to them and maybe they didn't get a college degree because they went straight into their dream job after high school. Like Mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, I think I think you are very focused on self-love and your standards. And I think those standards are great, but I would just reevaluate like what is really important to you at the core. And I wouldn't shut people off based on those broad descriptors. Like I would get to know them individually and get to know their story. And then from there you can decide if they're the one for you or not. Yeah. And I think the cool thing with dating is I think it's best to just kind of assume that this isn't going to be the person that you end up with. Assume like this isn't going to, you know, be this like groundbreaking love at first sight moment, but like just sit down and get to know the individual. Yes, kids sound scary. (laughs) I'm not saying jump into a relationship (laughs) with someone with kids, but I have met plenty of amazing guys who had a fling. They got pregnant and they have a kid, but he's grown so much since then. And like they're, they're yeah. an amazing individual. Yes, they have a past, but like, don't we all, you yeah, know? Yeah. So it's like, yes, obviously be careful because that puts you, that's a very serious relationship to enter into. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he's not an amazing guy or, or that she's an amazing mom, you know? Yeah. It's like, um, we all have our baggage. And if you are willing to put it, it aside for a second for one night where you sit and have drinks or you sit and have dinner, like just get to know the person and put yourself out there. I know it's scary, but, um, if you don't put yourself out there, he's not going to come just like show up on your doorstep one day. You have to, you have to take those steps towards, um, those goals. It's just like anything in life, whether it's fitness. Um, I say fitness cause I just worked out this morning. It's like the first <laughs> thing in my head, but like, if I don't get my ass on the bike, I'm not going to work out today. You know, I have to actually take physical steps downstairs and get onto yeah. my bike to make it happen. It's the same thing with work. Like if you want a promotion, you got to do the work, like whatever yeah. you're trying to strive for requires really hard work and you have to, Oh my gosh. I'm going to, I had you scared the crap out of me. You looked down like there was a spider on your no, leg. No, I posted uh, something yesterday because my Peloton instructor said it and it was the best. I thought quote. you were, I thought you were literally saying that to me because I was still in bed and you were working out. No, it was the best quote <laughs> of my life. And I posted it because it was, it was genuinely game changing and I'm going to say it to you. <clears throat> he said, Why do you keep doing the same thing, expecting different results? That is the definition of insanity. Insanity, which we're not. And so it doesn't matter what it is. If it's working out, if it's trying to find a relationship, if it's your career goals, if it's relationship goals, family goals, whatever, you're trying to like get your kid to like respond a certain way, this applies. Um, If you're doing the same thing, expecting different results, why that's insanity whatever you're striving for requires hard work so just accept it and buckle up yeah and that hard work in this case is putting yourself out there yeah I I definitely I feel like I can relate a lot to you because I know like I've only been in one serious relationship and then I'm just not a dater like Ash is like a dater I'm not like I've I never have been like, I'm, I'm very old school. I get very like, if I don't see a future with you, like I'm not going to waste my time. And even Ash like had to like encourage me and be like, but you can still go on a date and just 
talk to someone and get to know someone and it doesn't have to be this serious thing. And so I forced myself and it felt very unnatural to go on a couple dates with guys from dating apps. And I will say like, I walked away being like, I'm definitely not going to reach out to him again, but like, it was such a good reminder that like, one, I am a desirable person Two, I can carry a conversation and like talk to people. And it just like, it helped me to learn so much more about myself than like Mm -hmm. anything. And then the next guy that I reached out to, I, my confidence level and like my anxiety, my anxiety was gone about it. And my confidence level was so much higher Mm -hmm. because I had just got it the first one out of the way, if that makes sense. So I do agree. I think You should not lower your self-love, but I think you need to assess what is self-love and what is just that kind of word taking over everything. Um, Do not lower your standards, but be more open to like what really is a standard that you should set. And then I think also um, it's okay to like get a dating app or reach out to a friend to set you up on a blind date, whatever. Like it's okay to make those little steps because- maybe like that's what God is waiting for of like you take a step and I'm going to provide, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that is what I would say. But I girl, we need, we need more women that are just obsessed with themselves and waiting for someone to fall in line with that because (laughs) I do agree. Like I love myself so much and I refuse to accept anything less than that, you know? And so I think we all need that. But like I said, sometimes I know the decisions I make for myself out of what make me happy are not always the best. So I think I have to like always be assessing like what, what is the best for me? And sometimes making a sacrifice is my way of showing like I'm worth that to like go through a sucky situation if it's going to make me a better person. Yeah. And like a first date is not a marriage interview. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's a first date. It's yeah. so casual. Nothing's going to happen. Like yeah. you, you obviously keep your standards up, but I don't think those extreme standards need to be held on a first date when all you're doing is chatting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Go have fun. Get a free meal. A lot of them are weird. It'll be entertaining. It'll be a story to tell your friends. It's a great story. It's a great story. Have fun. I'm excited for you. Well, I love this. I loved the flow of this episode. And I hope, I know everyone listening is probably either in that state or yeah your story or mine if you're single you're wouldn't want to pick one or they're married and happy and are like oh i remember those they're days. like oh good time there's hope the drama <laughs> <laughs> okay i have a dad we joke. both just like uh, at the same time because we just know like as you guys know we end every episode with a dad joke um normally sometimes you guys send in some pretty serious stories and that's where the dad joke came from um but these were all pretty lighthearted. so but then i took it and ran with it and yeah made it. now we I always end with made a, dad joke. It a crucial part of every episode yeah, i it's forced it thing. forced it in there welcome okay. to taryn renee's favorite yes. part of yes. our podcast ready yes How do you organize an outer space party? (laughs) I love your guesses. How do you organize? How do you organize an outer space party? (sighs) Outer space Martians. (laughs) There's your one word. Spaceships. Arrival. Ready? Go. You plan it. (laughs) <laughs> I can't. I can't. It's so good. <laughs> Wait, one more just because. How, How can you tell if an ant is a boy or a girl? <laughs> I'm just going to say it. It's an ant. Uh, so, duh. <laughs> Female? Ant? They're, I mean, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. Not an uncle? They're all girls. Otherwise, they'd be uncles. Uh, at least I was kind of <laughs> close. The spaceship one was bad. <laughs> Oh, she man. said Marsh. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for uh, listening to today's episode. If you're still here, you guys know how much we love you. You yes. guys are the best. Um, be sure to follow us on all our socials and uh, we'll talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Bye.